Thanks for joining us. Well, the day after the credit policy, the governor of the Reserve Bank of India, D. Subarao, said that he's confident that the Indian economy will clock 6% growth. Lata Venkatesh caught up with the governor and began by asking him if the RBI was under pressure to put out that 6% figure. Here's the governor on the hot seat tonight. No, there was no pressure. It was our best political judgment, uh, excuse me, it was our best professional judgment that the growth in 2009-10 will be 6%. And that's the number we put. Having said that, let me say that within the RBI, there was considerable amount of debate on what the growth will be. And uh, having uh, reflected on the various growth models that our people have worked on, and having talked to people and listened to their judgment, we determined that the growth estimate for 2009-10 will be 6%. You don't want to give a bias. So would you fear that a, a, a downward bias is the more likely bias? No, I don't think so. If indeed we thought there was a bias, we would have put it in there, but uh, like we did in the January policy statement. But there is less uncertainty this, uh, to this number of 6%. Dr. Subara, banks have not obliged so much so far in terms of passing on rates. Uh, do you think that they are going to drag their feet even further? And if they do, what options do you have? The first part of your question, I think, is inaccurate in a strict sense. Because banks have responded to the policy rate cuts. You have so, cut your policy rate, right. your signaling rate, sir, repo was 9% in October. Now your signaling rate is actually the reverse repo at three quarter. This is a six percentage point reduction. I mean, they've not even obliged to what, 30% uh, of this. Well, the extent of reduction of uh, lending rates or BPLR is anywhere between 50 and 200 basis points. Yes, monetary transmission has been weak. It's always been weak in India and it's got a bit weaker in the wake of the crisis. But what is happened is around the world monetary transmission has got eroded and that's the big problem in uh, much more developed economies and I'm not surprised that it's a problem for us. Having said that, I must say that it's not completely broken down, it's working, but perhaps it's muted and we would like it to be more active, more effective transmission policy. Banks have also told us that their response should not be evaluated just by looking at the headline BPLR rate. We must look at the effective lending rate because as much as 70% of the aggregate lending is done at rates below the BPLR. If you take the effective lending rate, you will, you will note that it has come down between 2007-8 to 2008-9 to, to and they have assured me that it will come down further this year. Most of the bankers were saying that the problem of financing, say, ultra mega power projects or any of the big infrastructure projects is that you hit this uh, exposure limits, group exposure limit or company exposure limit. And uh, that's becoming a problem for uh, big uh, uh, power projects, for instance, to achieve financial closure. Are you uh, looking at, I mean, uh, uh, what the banks demand that uh, uh, infrastructure be kept out of these group exposure limits? That issue has been posed to us. And uh, we've talked to banks about this. First of all, uh, it should be acknowledged that the group exposure limit is a prudential norm. And that has served us well. And I believe that's going to serve us well. And it's not something that we must uh, dilute lightly. Okay. Yes, there is demand that there is need for big infrastructure financing. And that this group exposure, <coughs> excuse me, the group exposure limit or the individual exposure limit is uh, hitting that requirement. Also, uh, we must recognize that the group exposure limits that we have are quite liberal compared to international standards. Mm -hmm. And the limits for infrastructure are even beyond the limits for other sectors. I do not believe there is scope for relaxing this further. Do you think, uh, uh, you know, now that ATMs have been delicensed, uh, branch license deal or branch delicensing is round the corner? I wouldn't say that. Okay. Okay. Uh, we've always talked about liberalizing uh, the licensing policy and we will continue to liberalize that. I want to give the impression that our branch licensing policy, even as it is called licensing, is quite user friendly and serves a public purpose. Okay. 
to the extent that we need to take it, we will certainly do so.